Today, we're talking about how is now. If you have been in leadership or around business in the last 10 or 15 years, I can certainly guarantee you're familiar with Simon Sinek and his concept of starting with why. I love what Sinek says. He says that uh, people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. Companies need to start with why. They need to explain their purpose, their reason for existing. It needs to be something that customers should be aware of. It needs to be something that employees should be aware of. This is how employees get passion inside of a business, is that they align with the why of the business. I also think it's important for everyone to understand this because we need to know the end goal. We as human beings are very competitive we want to compete. We want to know that we're succeeding. If you've listened to my stuff for any period of time, you know I love scoreboards. I think that we should have visibly displayed scoreboards inside of our businesses and that people should be able to know at the end of the day if we won or lost or tied. They should know what down it is, how many minutes are left in the period. I'm very big on this, making sure people have clear communication to the goal of the organization. So starting with why is really important. It's a famous mantra. But that concept, that sort of uh, circle that, that, that Cynic talks about. Yes, we want to start with why. And he says that m- every business knows what they do, right? I mean, we all know what we do. It's a product or service we sell. We can all explain that. We have an elevator pitch. Very uh, few companies know how they do it, how they actually make the sausage, how the sausage is made, HTSIM, I call it. Uh, and, and even fewer still know why. So you want to start with why. It's important to do that. And there's lots of content out there about why and why we've got to be a part of these things, why we have to spend time and energy and money really conveying that message. The what is going to happen either way. What I want to talk to you about is the how. Um, I think I've seen this in 20 plus years of consulting from the biggest companies in the world to the smallest companies in the world. There's a big difference. There's a a threshold, a line that you cross someplace. And for some companies, it's in the 10 to $15 million range. And other companies, it's a couple of billion dollar range. But there comes a time where you move from having an operating system, sort of the way that you do business, and you start to create this value quality management system. It's truly an approach to value and quality inside the organization that takes you from this perspective of working on the business and really takes some time and attention and effort and people and resources and focuses them internally in the business to improve value. So value to shareholders and value to customers and to improve quality and, and when we think about quality, we tend to think about the end product that's delivered to the customer. I, I push back on that. I think quality is something that needs to be intrinsic to an organization. There's quality in the way that we approach problems. We have a quality work environment where we don't tolerate people being in pain. We don't tolerate bottlenecks. We don't tolerate slowdowns. We don't tolerate people waiting around. We don't tolerate people not knowing what they're supposed to do. We're big on clarity. We're big on measurement. Everybody understands the why of the organization. They know how to get there. They know the step that they take, their piece in the puzzle that adds to the next piece and the next piece and the next piece that creates that value chain for the entire organization. So it's important to understand and how. I want to give you a little bit of a lesson on process because I've been around this for a long time, but every single business, every nonprofit, every entity that is represented through the viewership of this show all have one thing in common. And that is that we're all in the exact same business. We take inputs and we transform those into outputs The challenge is that when we look at the whole cycle of business, we have inputs. This is all of our raw materials, all of our orders, our manpower, all those kind of things. We have outputs. That's the product. That's the what we deliver. We have outcomes. That's really the why we think about it. 
the why is the outcome of the business. It's the outcome for us. It's the outcome for our shareholders. It's the outcome for our employees. It's the outcome for our customers. We are, and, and, and then there's the, the throughput. And the throughput's right in the middle. So we have input, output, outcomes, and then we have throughput. Throughput is the how. It's from the time that we receive those materials and those orders and, and those service requests. It is the steps that we take in succession that create value and take the inputs, turn them into a valuable output that generates income for us, that creates a positive outcome for everyone in the cycle. So this is why value and quality management system is really important. When you become a larger organization, you tend to adopt one of these. You tend to start focusing on these things because you're trying to maximize value. We're trying to gain competitive advantage. We're trying to gain market position and market leadership. We do that through value, value and quality. We don't do it through more sales. And this is a mistake that I think happens a lot of times. And even it's, it's intrinsic to the venture capital world. It's intrinsic to the angel investor world. You know, we care a lot about revenue when it comes to that. We want market adoption. This is beyond market adoption. This is when you get into value quality management systems after adoption is sort of known and you know, you know, who your market is and you understand your why and your, your what is pretty well dialed in. Uh, so this value quality management system is really about thinking about everything that happens in the throughput and, and understanding it and defining it and making sure that it is optimized. Uh, most systems form in a void. What do I mean by that? Uh, intelligent design or evolution, uh, process tends to form via evolution and mutation inside organizations. We need to get something done. So we assign a few people to it and they find their way fighting through the darkness and the thicket to, to get there. That might not be the most efficient path. It might be sufficient to deliver the product in time and it might sufficiently get you uh, some value and some profit. It might even work in growing the business, but there comes a time where you've got to start focusing on that and say, is this the most efficient path? What of this aspect could we automate? What could we outsource? What could we abbreviate? What could we eliminate? How, how do we streamline and how do we find a faster way to either produce more product more quickly to increase the quality of that product or to decrease our costs? And, um, I'm really big, particularly when it comes to the throughput piece of recognizing that quality is not just into the product, it's into the, the way that people work, the quality of their work, the quality of the conditions of their work. And this is why a lot of times you'll hear me talking about when we do process mapping through our process triage workshop methodology, and we're bringing employees in, not executives in to say how things are done, but employees in to tell us how things are done. They map out that process together on our process boards. And then we ask them to uh, express where they experience pain or slowdowns or waitings or bottlenecks and, and to quantify that. So 50% of the time, the paperwork that we get from sales is insufficient to complete the order. 25% of the time, the materials aren't here when we're ready to start. 15% of the time, I have to search for the inputs that I need to complete my job. Have them write those things down and place those up on the process board as well. Then we go through those and we triage those. We figure out what's the most important. What's the thing that's going to kill the, the company the quickest? What's the least important of those? We go through those. We prioritize those. We run them through the methodology of triage, which asks a series of questions in order to determine how do we fix this problem? Is it something that requires further analysis? Do we need to design something, a system or a process or a best practice? Do we need to train people on something that already is known, but just maybe hasn't been expressed properly in the communication internally? And then finally, do we just need to hold people more accountable and enforce things? And what is that level of accountability and who's responsible for that accountability? So you can get a lot out of that when you when you throw that up on a large board and you visualize it and you can stand back and you can look at it and you can see the interconnectedness of all the throughputs of the organization and you can truly understand how they relate to each other, how they work with each other and where these pain points appear. If I want more quality, I certainly want more quantity. My operating system is to produce more quantity. If I want more quality, the easiest way to get more quality is to improve the conditions in which the work is done. 
See, if I, if, if I'm, if I want clean food that is not going to make me sick, do I want to eat out of a, a filthy kitchen that's has rodents and, and cockroaches? And of course not. No, I want to eat out of one that's spick and span that I can eat off the floor and I can look at, it, I can say, wow, that's great. The end output will be better when the, 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 the pain and the garbage is removed from the process, but the outcome also will be better. <laughs> like not, maybe not in every instance, you know, I can eat, you know, from, from, a, from a bad food truck once in a while and maybe be okay. But, but eventually, uh, the, the, the law of averages is not in my favor. So this is really critical in thinking about your business, recognizing that you have to internalize. Sometimes you've got to move from that working on the business to working in the business and having strategic insight into the value of the organization, how you create value, how quality is measured, how it's put into practice. And this can't just happen from the boardroom level. This actually requires you to get the people in the company to be the ones that express what is happening. I can give you story after story from our work of organizations that are wildly profitable, wildly successful, that bring a team into us and we ask them to map out the process and we ask them to express their pain. And we find multiple millions of dollars of things just laying around um, b- because we're not doing things at the highest level. We think it works, but we don't understand how that one thing becomes a domino effect that affects so many other things inside the company. So again, inputs, throughputs, outputs, and outcomes take uh, a different approach to throughputs in your organization. If you don't have a process map, go to our website and check out some of the things like our free quick map. That one just lets you do it in 10 bubbles. Figure out what your organization does. Figure out how things get done. Get at least a basic understanding of how the sausage is made. And then from then you can drill in even further. Hey, if you need help with this stuff, that's what we do. We do process workshops. We have certified facilitators in our methodology. We have just dozens and dozens and dozens of years of experience in doing this and optimizing companies and figuring out how to improve their process flow. And in the end, make more money and improve the relationship with your employees as well as with your customers. Okay. Until next time. You ready? Let's go. Welcome to the process fix to help you see the bigger picture. Derek Mains is the elixir cut and waste away like scissor. Woo! Got a problem, he can solve it. He's an expert with the process. So for sure you'll see a profit. Bottom line profit. Analyze the work your people doing every day. Expose the inefficiencies getting in the way. Advise you how to automate, outsource, abbreviate, eliminate, innovate. Now there's more food up on your dinner plate.